All right. So, main topic. PlayStation 5. Next-gen consoles. The future of gaming is here. Gentlemen. And uh, everyone put down your PlayStation 5 memes. I know it looks like a, cl uh, a cloister. Not a cloister. What's the small one? I don't know, that Pokemon. I know it looks like a router. I know. It looks like, like a, a bootleg uh, Wii. product and or a, a router or and an, a bootleg Wii had a baby. Or an Alienware PC. Or, yeah. again, vagina lips. The pog face. We all know. It looks goofy. That's understandable. But it's the future. And I want to get to the point where I have a goddamn antenna in my room compared to what we're looking at today. So, a couple things. We've got some announcements. They've announced actually a crap load of stuff for the recent PS5 unveil event. They showed off the system. Still no price yet. We don't know how much it's going to cost. I'm still sitting around the ballpark at least 600 and maybe seven. Some around there. Maybe 550. I don't know. Maybe the digital version will be down down there because it won't have the CD drive. But I'm thinking at least six to seven hundred for this console. Um, with the Xbox either being a little bit cheaper or a little bit higher. The Xbox technically has more raw power to it, so it may be a bit more. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But um, definitely exciting. So we have the mini fridge and the router. Uh, pick your Pokemon. And uh, but they also shut off a bunch of new games. And with the unveil of the, uh, the PlayStation 5, with uh, this nice little stream that they did, that was very, very, uh, what's the word? Polished? No, 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 no. If you were to sum up, like, the way they did the stream in one word, I'm trying to think of it. The one that keeps popping to mind is egotistical, but that's not right. Confident? Confident, Yeah. Like that, but like a bad word for that. Something along Cock this line. Sure. Yeah, like cocky, I guess. But they have all right. They have all right. But um, so a couple things. Sean, first thing, most important thing. Grand Theft Auto Five. It's never not the most important thing. No, it's coming. PlayStation Five. Never thought you see that one coming. It's basically the new fucking Skyrim, which is crazy because you look the last couple generations that of Grand Theft Auto. We're all a new game every couple years, and now we have eight years or so, and it's just been Grand Theft Auto Five ported to three different systems. So I don't know. Grand Theft Auto Six better be fucking literally the entire United States at this point, because I don't know what's taking them so goddamn long to get that game out. But Grand Theft Auto's coming to PS Five. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Second thing, also kind of interesting. Didn't expect this, but there's a new Spider-Man game coming. Spider-Man Miles Morales, and you play as Miles in this game, but it is not a sequel. It's like an enhanced and expanded version of the original Spider-Man game by Insomniac. So it's like a 1.5 game where you got a new character, you got a new story, but as far as I understand, it's like the same map, a bit bigger, and it looks nicer for the PS for the PS5. So. Actually, it comes out this holiday, so it might be on PS4, too. Well, I just thought that was interesting, that uh, they're doing like this weird like in-between game for Spider-Man. I'm, I'm always down for more Spider-Man, but like I want to see like how really... Is this worth another $60 if you're on the same map? It's just new character, different stories. And Miles looks badass. Looks super fucking cool. And uh, he looks like he's got all his fucking powers, like the invisibility, the electricity, and all that other shit. So I I'm excited. But uh, I love Spider-Man games. So, Gran Turismo 7, very important. Now that's coming. No one gave a fuck. That was like the one where you could see everyone, you can feel the audience collectively roll their eyes whenever, when Gran Turismo 7 came out. Um, there's a new Ratchet & Clank game, which is really fucking cool. And one thing that's interesting that we're going to talk about a little bit later is, Sean, did you watch the event? Did you see it or did you just know about the game? I saw parts of it. Okay. Did you see the Ratchet & Clank Review? Uh, I did not see all of it, but I saw part of it. I am excited for Ratchet and Clank. Something that's they, that was all gameplay, according to them, and they were hopping through all those rifts, so they were like dead ass, just showing off the power of these new SSDs they got in these systems, 
because they were going like through a wall and boom, you are in a whole new loaded world instantly. And they're just like normally in a, in a typical like physical hard drive. If you went through something like that, you'd have to go through some type of like hidden or some type of loading screen. But this just shattered it like no issue. Boom. You're in this whole new fucking world. That's how fast these new SSDs are loading games. And that's really cool because it does allow for cool creative decisions like that where you don't have to worry about loading in this whole new fucking area because it's just that fucking fast where players won't be seeing a difference as you're hopping between gigantic spaces like that, which is really cool. And I, and this game's not a remake of the older ones. This is just a brand new Rifts Apart game. Apparently it is a female ratchet and uh, furries rejoice, blah, blah, blah. And there's another thing furries rejoice about. We'll talk about that in a second. But um, Square Enix showed off a new game. Very little. Like, very fucking little. Um, it's called Project Athia. Athia. And you flew around. It was literally, like, maybe five, six seconds of gameplay. And nothing else. Um, Annapurna talked about uh, a robot-focused game called Stray. Where you're a cat set in a world where humans have died off entirely. But ha- cats are still in abundance. And robots uh, have replaced uh, humanity in their old rules basically uh near automata uh part two. <clears throat> oh my goodness um another new ip that show off was called returnal which kind of looks like it kind of looks like a mix of um like remnant and i don't know like i don't know it's kind of like remnant where like it's like uh, i don't know if it's going to be hard like remnant but the whole idea is you're stuck in this loop, and when you die, you go back to the start of the story or some shit. So, mm-hmm. but I don't know. You just—that's all they showed. It was all. I didn't know if it was in game or it was just a big old, big old fucking. Uh, I'm about done with time loop games, to be honest. They've been a rage for like the last couple of years, and it's really not my thing. I like the idea of time games, and uh, but they got to be done really well. Like the one that one didn't interest me at all, but the one the Bethesda one being done by Arcane Studios. Uh, Death Loop. That looks cool. So you're basically but that one is a different playthrough each time. Like you're constantly trying. Yeah, things things are changing. Things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's like the that's different. It also incorporated horror elements, if I remember correctly, right? Because and, your wife is dying, and sometimes and you die. Death like, Loop. And you're... No. Yeah, like you, you are. Woman? You are an assassin placed on a plate thing with all these other people trying to kill you. And there's another woman there that's also an assassin that's also trying to kill you, and you're killing oh, each okay. other. That's what it was. Yeah. 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 Um, I thought it was your wife for some reason, but I think I'm getting two stories mixed up. There was another game like that where you were stuck in one room and there was stuff going on. And if something bad happened, you restart to the beginning. And every time you played through, you'd learn something new about the story, but it was heavily narrative focused. This one's more like dishonored, but with more interesting elements added. So I don't remember what that other game was called, but it was an indie game. Like the whole time, the shot was just the, the like the root of the top of this like small apartment. And, like, cops would be called, your wife would die, all this other shit, and you're just trying to find out what the fuck is going on. Every time you die, you get set back to the start. Um, there's a new uh, Sack... There's a new Little Big franchise game. Little Big Planet franchise game coming out. Uh, Sack Boy, A Big Adventure. I don't know if it will have building elements. It looks more like just, like, a... You're Sack Boy, and you're going through all these pre-made levels. It didn't, they didn't show off anything in regards to creative elements. They could really use a new Little Big Planet, something that's a bit more stable in the multiplayer area. Yeah, man, I remember fucking the last one would just be so fucking laggy. We had some fun with it though. We really did, but it was a, uh, it was a uh, like that prop hunt game or that one with the boat that was so difficult. Yeah. Oh, that boat one with the you'd be attacked <laughs> by sharks and shit. That was fucking. Yeah. Fun. But that game lagged like a bitch. You're probably getting like 15 frames and shit was going down. Um. Destruction All Stars, like a derby game. It, it you know, what made Again. it. It made me want like a new. Uh, what's it called? Twisted Metal. That was called right. I wanted a new Twisted Metal since they re- released that one. P- pilot any car and jump in planes and shit. I didn't get to play that one. I wanted to. They didn't re-release it on PS4 yeah. like I was hoping. This is just kind of like that. I played thoroughly was Black, but I played all of one, two, three, four, and Black uh thoroughly and also that one that was released on psp and re-released on ps2 Mm -hmm. um i played that one also yeah uh it basically looks like fortnite and that had a baby 
like a derby and you can get out of the car and like jump on other people's cars and try and kill them and stuff. It looks interesting. Um, not nothing crazy though. One that actually caught my eye a lot is by Ember Lab. It's called Kena or Kenna Bridge of Spirits. It's basically like like Pixar and Pikmin had a baby. Like the graphics and all the animation are very Pixar esque, like fantasy Pixar esque. And then you have like these little cute creatures that follow you around like Pikmin and you use them in combat, use them to solve puzzles and stuff like that. Um it looks Sony cool. needs to stop acting like they're too like I think Sony's problem is they replace Nintendo as like the good the don't get me wrong, Nintendo still outsold everyone, but Sony became the Nintendo when the PlayStation came out because it was more dynamic than the 64 and it wasn't as limited as the 64 in terms of textures and things like that. Granted it was real janky with the polygons and whatnot. They did a lot of cost cutting measures that made the, the PlayStation one for the most part, less powerful than the Saturn. It was just a shitload easier to write for. Uh, and the place, the PS one, why the PS one pulled so much farther ahead of the 64. But the 64 still had some winners on it, even if everything looked like it was made with mud and under 16 pounds of fog. Yeah. But when the when the PlayStation 2 came out, they, Sony was cemented as like the go to and they were edge lords. They had all the edgy content, all the questionable content. They weren't afraid to pop eyebrows and make parental groups bad. But ever since the whole social justice thing kicked in. Sony gets crucified every time they have something that's that would be objectionable to to a small handful of people or a group of people. And the point is, is just there's really no such thing as a game you can't make. Now they can not license a game for their platform, but they should not be doing the standards thing where it's like, oh, uh, there was a, there was a penis in that, or oh, there was a nipple, or oh. You know, uh, this is purely a cheesecake dirtbag game where it's all about the tits and asses or, oh, uh, this game's humor airs a little too edgy, so we're going to need you to change that. That kind of shit it has got to go because if they're going to continue to lose people in droves to the Switch, and that is one thing they do not want. Losing people to Microsoft is not nearly as threatening to their bottom line as losing people to the Switch. Yeah. And they are losing players to the Switch. And that's fucking... Still to this day, it's weird to me going to the Switch to get a game instead of to the PlayStation because Sony is always a stronger console. It's very, very weird. But I, and I can't wrap my head around Nintendo, the Disney of video games, allowing adult shit on their fucking thing. It's just crack. I just It shouldn't be that way. <laughs> like something's wrong with the world. When Sony is going, wait, no, you can't have that scene in there because there's like three people that are gonna find it be find it problematic. And Nintendo's like, fuck it, bring it over here. We don't care. Like I, I can't look at look at me. Make a game. That. I want to feel how it is to hold a titty in my hand, put it on a Joy-Con, give it to me. That's Nintendo. They funded that. So hey. well, they didn't Nintendo's fund like, it directly. It. We but they allowed it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Like I mean, what the fuck is going on, Sony? Really. Yeah, that and like the move controllers weren't a bad idea. Redesign them visually so people don't think they're so silly, <laughs> and incorporate them better because the move controllers were solid. I put this in my butt. You know, like I'm going to pong. try. I get, I get what you were trying to do, but I uh, make them forwards compatible, backwards compatible. Bring them over. But I think it would be also really smart to do is to release a redesigned version of the move controller where people don't feel like it's so goofy i i would hope at some point they do that for the vr sets that they have they actually are vr sets instead of just the helmet and a controller that'd be cool like they have the tech they just have to update it and make it look nice yeah they're going to release a new version of the uh of the helmet i'm surprised uh, the they didn't show it off at and all the eye updated hardware but i don't know if they're going to visually be any different the cameras look nicer they showed off the camera at the, the end. PlayStation Eye. Yeah, but the only part. thing they showed off was the camera. The VR helmet wasn't there, so that, that was that was interesting. Maybe they still have it as a work in progress for right now. That's why I held off on picking it up when it went on sale. The uh, because I knew they were going to release new versions of the VR stuff for the upgraded PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. Kino looks cool, and uh, I just love the look of it. It looks really pretty, and uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a 
from a hoe when it comes to really pretty games. So uh, we had Goodbye Volcano High, which is the other thing that Furry should be excited about. Uh, it's a bunch of dinosaurs in high school. Like anime dinos. And they showed this That's off. all there is about that. Yeah, pretty much. Continuing. Uh, there's another Oddworld game coming out. Uh, Yay. Uh, it looks... It, still side-scrolling and stuff. Um, It'd be cool if they brought a sequel out to it, Stranger's Wrath. That game was fun. It seemed like it was looked very... And the earlier games, they, they kind of had... They had a, their own sense of humor and stuff. So They're I, so dark, though. Yeah, yeah. But, like, this looks like it was all dark. It looked like it was... An extension to the story, I I don't remember anything because our world was something I never really played. I just remember parts of it from I think we rented it one time or some shit. But that's cool for the people that are fans of that. Uh, they showed more of Ghostwire Tokyo, uh, which looks interesting. It's like you're like a Buddhist Ghostbuster in Japan. I don't know. It looks kind of cool. Uh, I it definitely looks more like an action game than it what it did originally. Where when they first showed off, it looked kind of more like a horror game. There may be horror elements still, but you you're actually hunting these things down. So it looks pretty cool though. I like the look of it. The design looks cool. I I just need to see more though. I don't know if it's open. I don't know if it's open world, linear. I have no fucking clue. Um, they show off a game called Jet: The Far Shore. No fucking clue what it it's about. No idea whatsoever. It looks like you're flying a rocket around. I don't fucking know. Showed off more Godfall, which looks like War Warframe free to play. I don't know if it is free to play. I might try it, but I'm not spend any money on Godfall. It, it looks like Warframe, like but only melee. You can't shoot guns. Um, but I don't know. I have no idea. That's the only thing I know about it. it looks like Warframe. Um, they have Solar Ash, which is made by the same people that did Hyperlight Drifter, which is kind of cool. Um, and it looks nice. It's kind of like got that like uh. Trying to see what it's like cell shaded, really nice colors. It's like a style. A lot of indies use it because it's cheap to design for. As long as you have a really good art style, it will hold up. Um it looks dope. I, I don't really know. That they didn't really show much. Like you had a little bit of the movement look really clean. You had a little bit of like skating on the ground that the character was doing, but outside of that, it was all like cinematics and stuff. Uh there's a new Hitman game coming out, which looks literally just like the last one. Not in, like, the area, but it looked nothing like Next Gen at all. It deadass looked just like Hitman 2 in its graphics and stuff like that. Uh, they're making an Astro's Playroom game, uh, which looks like Bootleg Mario. About it. Uh, they had one other interesting indie called The Little Devil Inside. It looked like a mix of, like, Monster Hunter and Legend of Zelda. It looked really, like, I don't know, charming. It looked kind of cool. I don't know what the fuck it's about, but it looks like... The kid going on an adventure and he fights monsters. It looks like you have like a whole tool kit of different uh, things that work in different ways, and you're hunting down monsters and doing puzzles and stuff. It looked like Zelda and Monster Hunter kid, so it, it looks interesting. Um, then they had like this LSD simulator game called Bug Snacks, where uh, you go around eating food and you turn into the food and. I don't know. It's made by the people that made Octo Octo Dead. Uh so it just looks fucking weird. Like that was like the like oh these people took LSD to make this. <clears throat> mm. Demon Souls is getting a remake, which is fucking dope. It's being done by Blue Point. Same people that did the other Dark Souls remakes, so that's fucking awesome. Um I never really beat Demon Souls. I've only played it at a friend's house. But uh Demon Souls is I've heard is like one of the better ones of the franchise, so that's fucking cool. Uh, I'm sure they'll do well because the other the other games that were remade by Blue Point uh, have sold incredibly well and they say are good. So let's go. Uh, Death Loop we talked about earlier. Um, that's that. Looks kind of cool. Uh, they showed off the new Resident Evil, and it's literally the same. It's not the same as I think as Seven, but it it's the same story. So you're Ethan. You're after what happened, the events of Seven, and it's the same characters. So I did not expect that at all. I thought it'd be like a new game. But it's called Village, Resident Evil Village. And um, it looked really good. The only thing was the trailer. The entirety of the trailer was in 30 FPS. And it was destroying my eyeballs. It was fucking disgusting. So I hope that's not how the game actually plays. I doubt it might just been an issue with the stream and the server or whatever. They just didn't get a good, video, a good enough video out. But it looked cool. I didn't expect to see more of Ethan. But one thing is you go in this castle at some point, Sean. The... 
the level design in this castle looked fucking magnanimous. Like, it was so pretty. Like, there's so much detail in this castle and some of the scenes they showed off. I'm like, holy fuck, that looks gorgeous. So that'd be cool. I'm excited to see what the... Hopefully it's not all in this little shitty ice or snowy uh, village or whatever. But um, that looked pretty dope. Uh, really can't say much else about it. Because I know, Sean, you weren't you weren't too much of a fan of the first person element that was in seven, correct? No, I, I didn't really like it. I didn't think it fit, fit Resident yeah. Evil at all. So it's coming back. Thoughts? It's technically the first same game. First person again? Yeah, yeah. You're the same character, same same yeah. story. I like Not seven interested. a lot. I like seven a lot. It definitely. I get the the idea that it doesn't feel like a Resident Evil game, but I think that they do a lot to make up for what you lose in the third person perspective. But I, I definitely get that. Uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. It looks really cool. And I liked seven a lot. I liked Ethan as a character. I liked his relationship with uh, Mia. And I liked that, the way that story played out. So I'm interested to see where it goes. But you see like at the end of the, ta- the trailer, like Chris is there and he just unloads a full fucking clip into Mia's head. And I'm like, well, what the fuck's going on? And then, like, Ethan's like, why? So looks interesting. We have a game that basically looked like fucking... It looked like it looked like Death Stranding with less budget called Pragmata. It was a Capcom game. Yeah, I have no idea. You have a man in a spacesuit, something breaks in through like a dome, and there's a girl there, and she I guess she's a robot or some shit, and they get sucked into space and they're on the moon, and I don't know what the fuck. And it looks interesting though. It's like one of those things like it's so weird you know it's Japanese. Just cause it's fucking weird. Um and I'm like, oh, we'll see what we'll see what that happens. And then they showed off uh, Horizon. The next Horizon game looks absolutely gorgeous. It looks so pretty. Uh, so I'll, that's very exciting. The first one was an excellent game. Story was pretty lackluster in my opinion. But the combat, world, all that was really interesting. It just sucked that all of it was surrounding this wet paper bag of a protagonist that was Aloy. So hopefully uh, she gets a little bit more evolving or something she just does more as a character looks i don't know grows or some shit because it didn't this didn't happen all that much in the first game i found her a bore to listen to outside of that it was fun to play and the gameplay was top notch so definitely dope also the first game's coming to pc at some point so maybe we'll see the second one come to pc at some point too especially if it sells well and then finally it showed off the care the consoles we talked about them um I overall like the color scheme. I like the idea of the the black, and then you have like the the lot the the like the the blue LEDs, almost like as a what's the word? The word coming to mind is like a tertiary color, like an outlining color kind of thing, where you have like so you have the black and white and the blue lines that kind of scatter the console. I think that looks nice. It looks like a exploded clam. It, I, it looks. It actually looks kind of flimsy. Like it looks like if it fell off of a counter or something. Like you break all of the plastic on the outsides where the, the actual flaps are and stuff like that. So I don't know how durable this bitch is gonna be, but it definitely looks like if I sneezed on it too hard, I'd break the the tipped plastic, the white tipped plastic all over the place. It might not even be plastic. It might be something stronger that would survive that. But it looked like plastic. I don't know. Uh, do you have any thoughts on the design, Sean, of the consoles? Uh, I think it just it should be black. I think it's been black <laughs> since the second iteration. Yeah. PlayStation Two, PlayStation Three, PlayStation Four. Like it's the black console. It's something we've all come to expect and love and appreciate from it. And I really don't think that uh, that that is what people want from a PlayStation. It can still be I think blue. Maybe maybe right. they were like, "Hey, we're going we're going for change. It's new it's new dawn." New, no, it isn't. Shut up. Stop that. Yeah. Uh, don't I, do that. Like, people like change. They do like change. They don't like an ass load of change. And you've made it look like a strange, bizarre little thing. And if you want people to accept it, I mean, we need to have some sort of link between the last console and this one. And you're trying to break that link. You're trying to break all association. And I really don't think that's a smart idea. I don't think you want to break the the relationship and the idea 
the connection that people have to this device. I think that's a very bad idea. I think they went more for the idea of like, oh, hey, it feels like you're stepping into the future kind of thing. Because like, that's the whole talk. It's all like, we're moving into the next generation. This is the future of gaming, blah, blah, blah. So they want to make the stuff look goofy and futuristic. And like, you can probe your asshole with it kind of thing. Like, I don't know. But I, 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 feel, I feel that. I think this would be very interesting setup for like the special edition consoles. Like, I want to see what some special edition PS5s look like. Like, the ones that are for, like, collector's edition. Or not collector's edition, but, like, those cool consoles. Like a Destiny PS5 or a Spider-Man PS5. I want to see what they do with that and how that looks. That'd be kind of interesting. But outside of that, I mean, I'd get that. Uh, give, give, us the ice cream, give us a little the ice cream sandwich back kind of thing. Um, but I'm sure they'll eventually release a black version. Can't see why they wouldn't. Uh, but it, it looks goofy to me. I think the regular thing, the, I think the digital version looks nicer because it doesn't have that tumor of a disk drive on the side. Like the regular version is all nice and slim and then you got a fucking fat ass CD drive sticking out the side. Whereas the digital version just like comes down and it's slim at the bottom. Um, which is, again, it's fine. I'd rather it be there than it not, right? Like, they could have easily just said, hey, digital version, fuck discs, and then pissed off a bunch of people, but they have it. It's there, and that's So, um, yeah, I, that's about it. I thought the event, overall, the event was, if I were to give the event a score, it'd probably be like a six or a seven. Like, I, the, I was hoping there'd be more first party. Like, the really only, the fir- only first party things we got was Spider-Man and um, Horizon. And for a lot of people, that's worth it, even though Spider-Man's not even, like, a full-on sequel. So they're really the only, like, full-on sequel next-gen game would be the Horizon game. And the rest of it was just mostly indies. But uh, I'd probably give it, like, a 6 or a 7. I'd give it a 6 and a half of this event, having watched it start to finish. Um, it was fun watching it. I was watching it with Nick... And we were just talking shit uh, the whole time about, like, different things. Because they had some stuff that looked like, uh, what was the meme? Like, there was something that looked like Halo. And they're like, ah, oh, we lied. Halo's coming to PS5 now and shit like that. That was just a meme the rest of the fucking stream. Like, oh, guys, it's Halo. Halo Infinite. <clears throat> I think when they showed out Demons, they were saying that a lot. Because they had, like, this whole overarching... It actually looked a lot like Elder Scrolls. When they shut off Demon's Souls. Talking about the launch titles is important because you're only as good as your launch lineup in terms of how your sales are going to be. But I think what's more important is talk about what the console is going to do for us. Talk about why it's a stronger option than just dumping it and going to PC. Talk about why it's a stronger option than going to Xbox. Talk about why it's a stronger option than Switch. Talk about what you're going to do in the new field like it's just as much uh an important representation of what choices sony is going to be doing as a company as a hardware manufacturer um as it is you know what's the next system going to be like like you've got something much bigger going on anytime the new system's coming out yeah i mean it's i think it's kind of nice because you got um uh like, you can still play, like, they say, like, what was it? Like, the top 100 PS4 games, like, based on playtime. So GTA Five is going to be in there. Would be available on launch for the PS5. I'm not interested in most of the top 100 games. Yeah, so. yeah, that's true. And, like, un- I don't think they'll have, like, any of the other stations. Although, I think they have a system in play. They got, like, the PlayStation Now. Um, They have patents in place for backwards compatibility for ps1 2 and 3 yeah so i don't know there's wh- something going on there and yeah. that they're and it will be suicide like they will fail if they do not give people true backwards compatibility and it is completely possible to do they've done it twice before and it worked fairly well so if they don't do it this time if they do not give people the ability to play the games that they've had for so fucking long um, they're in trouble because people are not going to pay fucking twice anymore. They're not doing it. They're tired of it. They're tired of constantly paying for a game they bought and then buying it again and then buying it again and then buying it again. They bought the software. They own it. Let them play it. If you're going to resell it, if you're going to offer it again, then that needs to be a remastered version that offers something additional. Yeah, I. it'd be interesting to see what they do. They haven't said anything about it yet, so... I wouldn't hold my breath. I don't know. Here's my deal, man. 
I can buy a computer right now, go and buy Half-Life from Steam and play the original Half-Life. Yeah. As good as it can look. I can buy a uh, a fucking game from the 90s if I want to yeah. and go and, On and GOG. You know, it's a little bit yeah and it, and get that shit to play. So I'm not barred from playing games that I purchased 20 or 30 years ago on a new system, on a computer, or 10, 15 years ago, or what have you. You know, there's going to be more difficulties the older it gets, just because some hardware is not so friendly toward it. But there are ways. So if you are going to do this, then you need to be prepared to fully support it. Yeah, I feel that. But yeah, I, I think that's just, it's, it's kind of, I'm sure it's difficult. I don't think they have like a proper system currently to emulate the games. So I don't know. Hopefully they do get it for the people that have that. But I, I, I'm not sure you'd be able to at one point put a PlayStation 2 disc into a PS5 and be able to. I think if anything, at the very least, I don't know, they would be on, they'd go like on PlayStation Now or some shit and they'd be there and available. Put a fucking FPGA chip on there. They're expensive, they're worth it. Uh, I will pay for it, but you, you fucking, because you already can FPGA PlayStation Two. You can FPGA uh, fucking PlayStation One. Nintendo sixty four is a little bit difficult. Saturn's a bit difficult. I think they just cracked that one. So put FPGA chips on there because you put enough FPGA, you get a good FPGA chip on there. We're fucking set. I just think they don't, they don't feel like it's worth the effort. I would assume. And they probably uh, no. They've never felt like it was worth the effort. Yeah. And they they probably they did it once, and there not enough gamers spent money on it. They're probably right to a degree because they probably went out and they're like, "Hey, how much interest is related to this? Like, do we really want to do this?" And they went out and did like, um, like market studies and shit like that. And they're like, "Okay, this probably isn't worth it." So fuck it. And they just never. So they're probably right to a degree. It just sucks that the people that do want it are kind of screwed over because of it. So. But outside of the review, which was cool, seeing the new system, seeing the future of gaming and all that stuff, another interesting thing about all this talk going on with new consoles is what they're actually doing to bring games into the future. And one big talking point for Sony and Xbox to a degree has been the new uh, hard drives that they have, these new SSDs that they have. Now, Sony's is a little bit different than Xbox's. Sony has gone out. Now they didn't make these themselves. They've they probably went out and went to someone that creates these storage devices. Be like, hey, we're trying to create this, this, this. We want to be able to do this, this, and this. Can you do this? Blah blah blah. Um, and they did. So Sony's SSD. The one special thing about it is okay. So I, I've I've looked into this and I've taken notes. So I'm gonna try my best to explain this in a way that makes sense. For someone that has no fucking clue even what an SSD is. SSD. It's a storage device. Now, it's a solid state drive. They look a little bit different than physical drives which have existed to up to the PS5. You went out and bought a PS4 that was based straight from the factory. It would have a physical disk drive in that system. Now, some of them, or you can technically throw an SSD in there which does not use any physical. It's all pretty sure it's chemical. Or it's a it's a either electrical or chemical what an SSD is, and it stores memory in that way. So the memory is faster because it doesn't have to fucking spin a fat disk around to read and write data. It does it all through electrical slash chemical uh, interactions and shit like that. So they're much faster. They allow you to read and write faster. Now the biggest thing with this obviously is they're going to maximize read potential because what they want is for your games to load faster. Writing is not as, as important as reading because writing would be if you were to download a game, how long it would take um, this, your PlayStation to install that onto the drive itself and make have them in a format that are ready to read files for the game to actually play. So that's not as important because that's limited by your download speed, obviously. So it, your writing speed won't even be that big of a deal in the first place. But Reading speeds is one of the most important things. That's what they've been talking a lot about is because they want to get loading times as low as possible. Now, one thing that's special about Sony's new SSD that differs from like a typical one you'd find if you were to put in a computer or put in a new PlayStation or put in a PS4 or some shit like that is high-end 
these SSD, these high-end SSDs usually will have uh, these these controllers on them, and they offer like flows of information and how it controls those flows of information amongst the, the storage device. And a typical high-end one would have like eight of those, right? And they have these eight different flows that will allow information to flow in onto the device. And then they'll have like low-end ones will usually have like four-ish, like four to six-ish, right? But Sony's, they have 16. There's 16 drives of these and uh, controllers in these Sony things. So it's thing is, is they were looking to make an SSD that would optimize as fast as they can, or not 16, it's 12, I'm sorry. They would optimize as fast as they can to have these things have crazy like power on how they can read information. Um, and typically the, the SSD wouldn't normally need this, but if you design a game around a disc like this that can read at this rate, you can do different things. It's basically kind of breaking down some shackles that some game developers have to go through when they consider developing a game. Because a lot's one very important element of making a game and people playing a game is where loading occurs, how to properly hide it, how to set it up so you're not running into areas where elements are still loading into the game as you're watching it that breaks immersion. They have to build games around this. So oftentimes they'll take creative decisions to either limit speed through an area, to show something while something's happening, to hide loading or something along those lines with these systems. They're, 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 the capacity of these things is like, like, like 8 to 12 times faster than a typical PS4 hard drive you are getting eight to 12 times the performance. This is just in, 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 uh, in writing. But another thing with these channels is that um, developers have access on how the channels work. Like you can control these, these channels inside the SSD. You can have elements loading in different ways and you could be like, okay, hey, we have the background loaded. That takes the longest time. We need this many channels for background loading. We need this many channels to manage new AIs loading in, AI programs loading in, what AI should do, blah, blah, blah. We need this many channels to do this. So devs have much more control over what they want to happen and how these things happen. And it makes the overall gaming experience much better. And because of that, the SSD itself will take some, some load off of the rest of the hardware on the system. And that, so to a degree, not only... With these channels, will you see games load faster? Games can be compressed differently using these. So you would even see games get to a point where they start to get smaller. So some games might not even be 50, 60, 70 gigs, but because of the way these channels work and the way that they can read the, the files, they can be compressed in a different manner. So the files themselves won't even be as big. So there's so many things that this SSD brings into play that Sony has gone out to provision for their systems. Now, uh, I think Samsung just recently announced that they will be giving something like this, like a higher end, like 12 channel SSD will be coming out from them later in the year themselves, right? So, it, um, so it's not like, right now PC doesn't have it. Like this is something that Sony went on their own out to get out and i know everyone's like pc no longer master race that's true in ssd because sony at this point has one of the fastest ssds on the market one of the strongest ssds on the market so you will see like unparalleled when it launches well actually if it comes out in august then it won't be i could go out in august i'd get it out before it comes out holiday but whatever technically even though we don't have it in our hands it's unparalleled loading times or that's what we think <laughs> so I'm not trying to be a doubter. Like, this is really cool shit. And I'm glad Sony's taking the time to not only, you know, just a lot of this reminds me, Sean, of like what they were trying to do with the PS3. Except as long as they have a better, a better method with having dev devs make for their game, it looks like they're doing, they're making a powerful system, but they're keeping in mind uh, giving devs control on how they do the games. Now, I don't know... Because if this is something that's uncommon, I don't know the relative ease that a developer would have implementing this technology. I have no idea about any of that. I've, I've just looked into what 
this technology can do for future games. And this stuff we won't see for a while anyway, because a lot of the games that will be dropping on the system, we won't see any things that will majorly utilize this, this technology for about a year or two once we start to see games that have this in mind coming out. Uh, but it's just very interesting um, the, the step up Sony has taken here to really bring something that is, in fact, a next-gen upgrade. Where And I get you could say the same thing from PS3 to PS4. It was next-gen to a degree. A lot of people would, were thinking, like, we've, got, we've come so far in graphical fidelity and all this other stuff. Where is the next big next-gen step we can take? And this seems like a really good step forward. And I think a lot of people will start to notice just how much slower or how much faster the load times are. Um, now, the other stuff that happens in-game, the loading in-game that happens probably won't be as noticeable. You'll just be like, hey, the game's smooth. But one thing, go watch that Ratchet and Clank trailer. I bet you that was using that SSD. Look how smoothly that will go from one entire map loaded. You're in a transition. Boom, you're in an entirely different map with little to any pop-in. Like, you're just there. Boom, you're in this new area. That's how fast this, this thing is fucking loading these areas. It's crazy. So I just thought that that was like super interesting another thing is expandability some people were trying to figure out like with these since they're like proprietary right like this is something sony has gone out provisioned themselves your system's only 825 gigs right you're like barely at a terabyte give the os you might be closer to like 750 maybe 800 like with the os on it so you're like well fuck what do i do if my my thing's full how do i expand storage and keep this performance especially because you don't want to be playing games on like a, a joe schmo fucking crappy ssd sony has obviously said that they'll be going out looking at third-party markets uh or third-party like creators of this shit and sitting down with them and being like hey uh we need to see will this be compatible with our system will this be able to hold the performance that our proprietary ones are doing and then they'll have like a list of like these are all these are all ssds you can go out and buy if you want to expand your storage that will work with what sony's trying to do so as this tech becomes more readily available and cheaper and all that stuff, we'll see more of these flood the market and it won't be as much of a problem. But people early that do want to expand might have difficulties doing so until Sony's able to come out and be like, hey, this is the kind of SSDs you can use that will be able to utilize the technology that some of these games are trying to use because if not, you'll have issues with performance. Or you could have issues with performance. It's not a guarantee. It really depends on how they set that up. They might have different systems that will read the disk it's trying to write off or read off of and have different... I, that sounds like a lot of fucking work, but have different ways of loading depending on what storage device they're using. But um, it's all it's all pretty fucking exciting. And I, it'd be interesting to see what what devs can do creatively knowing they have more freedom in this, in this way. And just some of the... Because like, that's one thing, even if... like. Uh, some other examples of things just pl plagued by bad loading times and creative uh, creative alternatives would be like Final Fantasy 7, Sean, right? John? Yeah. Final Fantasy 7, you know how like a lot of time you're going into an error area, what do you have to do? You sit there and saddle yourself through a tight corner, right? Take 10, minute, 10 seconds to saddle your ass through a tight corner? That's disguising loading. They need to load the next yeah. area. So... You can have a game, Final Fantasy VII per se, come out, we have these SSDs, that's eliminated. So that was a creative decision that had to have been made to allow us to get that little time to get this next area loaded in. But for that, you can have a whole open world game going and actively going less with less popping. Um, there will still always be popping to a degree because it needs to load at some point. But there's other creative decisions they could do to hide that, um, the way it pops in and stuff like that. But you see less overall and just quicker getting into a game quicker moving around the ui of the playstation uh and depending on the ram there'd be less take up there because they need to have that that memory available for multiple actions but um it's just interesting the only thing that really is a is a slight hookup for me and it really depends on uh because if you do have a ps4 game you want to play on the ps5 those games are still really big 825 gigs is not a lot Especially for someone that's a pretty big fan of playing video games. Um, yeah, I have a two terabyte and I run out of space all the time. So that's going to be an interesting scenario until they... But, 
get their list they out. They have those memory cards and those memory card things that they are going to be using is a uh, solid state as well. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, so... they need to they need to come out with a list of of shit that actually works with those, right? Because if you're designing a game around a 12 channel system, you want to make sure you have other other. You don't want to be able to plug in a memory card that is fucking shit and have performance suffer because of it. And then then all of a sudden you're experiencing horrible pop in. Uh, you're walking to areas that aren't even properly loaded because the disc gets reading off of is not using the same technology. So they need to come out with a list um, that's be like, hey, boom, bam, bop, this is what you fucking need. Go pick it up, slot it in. Yeah, but they do have the, they're basically, they're literally uh, just hard drive readers. Like if you've ever worked in a, in a, an area where you deal with reading hard drives or transferring information or fixing computers or some shit like that, you'll have them. So they're just like branded hard drive readers, readers for SSDs. The big old box, you slop that bitch in and plug it in the console, and you have your expandable storage. But yeah, you are... It's kind of garbage that they went from being a company that embraced you and expanding it yourself and being able to go out and pick what one you wanted and now you can't expand the hard drive at all, and they picked this tiny-ass hard drive that they know is not going to be big enough. I just don't understand the choice. And I mean, some people want to have all their shit, and if they were buying a computer, they can do that. If they're using a PlayStation 3 or a PlayStation 4, there's a chance that they'll be able to do that too, even though they have their limitations. But yeah. yeah, with this one, it's turning more into the <laughs> shittiness of the Xbox, where what you see is what you get. Yeah, I think it's. And I don't like that. I think it's also just kind of like a penalty of the times, because this is like next gen technology, and if it's not openly available, you can actively have people ruin their experiences if they don't have something that is possible. Now, I don't think you can change out the internal. Like you're saying, the PS4, you pop out a fucking little little plastic shit and boom, you have full access to your hard drive. You unnail some screws and boom, your hard drive is out and you can pop an SSD in there if you wanted to. But yeah, as much as I feel that, especially as someone that has a PC and can do that, if I needed expandable storage or I needed to switch something out, it would take me like 20, 30 minutes and, and a night and then I'd be done. And well, 20, 30 minutes in, in a night and I'd be done. You just plop in the new bitch and you're good to go. But that's just one of the things that PC offers because of its, uh, what's the word? Uh, I don't know, the ability to modulate it. I don't know, there's a term for it. I don't fucking remember. But I, I think it's interesting and I'm going to be watching PlayStation games to see how they utilize this tech. But this is the first thing I've seen from PlayStation talking about this new stuff that has made me feel like, whoa, this is next gen. This could be something cool. And if games are built around this, this will be interesting. So I just thought it was really cool. And I think that this is definitely one step that we will see more in the future. Just less, 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 less loading at all. And the fact that we were still using physical drives for the PlayStation 4. I mean, again, it came out like seven years ago. Like that just baffles me. Like people are going to see a huge difference once they get these SSDs in there. For people that never like, I've been playing on SSDs for a long time. My important games sit on them on my PC, and it is a world of a difference. It is so much fucking faster. It's insane. Some games even require it. Like Star Citizen requires an SSD. Well, they say to require an SSD because it helps with performance because it helps load stuff in faster. Your experience overall is better. So definitely an awesome upgrade from sony but i think we're gonna have to deal with some of the almost feels like i also it. just don't think that's gonna make the system either like no, okay, no. a lot of it will be the games have, obviously you know a hard drive so down okay that's that's cool that's neat and i i like that but i what really matters to me is what are you doing to compete with microsoft what are you doing to compete with switch have you relaxed your censorship policies you know, uh, why why does uh, Microsoft have a stronger console? Yeah. Do they actually have a stronger console? And it's interesting. What because is your response to that? It's interesting because while they do with raw power, that doesn't always make a better experience. Because with this 12 channel system, if devs get good at it, you have better optimization for a PS5. Devs have more control over what they can do with the system and what the system, what, what, instances they can control within a game so you'll see better performance 
if this technology works out as it does and devs can utilize it properly, you'll see better performance on a PS5 across the board because of the way it handles this stuff. You can get a lot, get a lot more out of the hardware you're working with with your SSD. And it does help to a degree. So I, as much as I understand with you, it doesn't feel like there's a, still a heavy competition going on between the two and they're, they're not like trying to distinguish themselves as much. Um, I'm just excited that this looks like something that's actually next gen where besides, but since that I haven't seen anything, Xbox hasn't done shit to show that outside of showing their pre-built PC, their mini fridge. Um, but the PS, if you want more information on this and a much better explanation than I can provide, uh, PlayStation thought they, they did their own fucking little tech talk. They did the same thing last year or last, uh, maybe the year before. I don't know. But they talk. They sit down and talk. Now it might be boring. Maybe watch someone talk about it. I don't know. Um, but that's the idea, and that's one exciting element of moving forward to see what comes out of games uh, that realize this. But I probably got some stuff wrong. This is just some me digging for a little bit, uh, like in about an hour or so earlier today, and looking into it. But if if there's something I did get incorrect, feel free to let me know. Join our Discord. And say, hey Kyle, you fucked up. Wouldn't be the first time. But uh, that that's cool. And as always, it looks like they'll be having the majority in exclusives because that's just what Sony does. I'm still not the biggest fan of exclusive as a whole, but hey, that, that's just what they do. So I think that's one of the biggest things that people care about is their games and what they will be getting. And if PS5 comes out the door with that, uh, people will still be willing to shell into that and just kind of disregard the other stuff that's going on with Sony, unfortunately. But again, it's just how it is. Um, but yeah, it's exciting for me. I think it's cool. I think, I think if you have a physical drive in your system right now and you have expendable income, stop it. Get rid of that bitch. They suck. They're old. Physical drives are 10, 15 years old. They suck. No need for it should be on you should be using solid state drive and now that they're cheaper you can get like a two terabyte one for like three three hundred bucks i looked it up recently uh two terabyte ssd no i got mine for about 200 you can get you can get a poo poo samsung one like this is at a lower speed but it's still an ssd uh for two terabytes for 249 at fucking best buy and boom you have a huge fucking ssd that uh, will just be a immediate difference compared to your physical drive. So, but yeah, our well, that's about all for like what Sony's doing and what I've seen them doing or trying to do for next gen. It's pretty exciting. I'm sure a lot of people are just hyped that we have new consoles. There's that seasonal hype just in general that hey, there's new shit coming around the corner. People are excited for that. The fanboys are going off. Hey, that's exciting. But. I do like that that Sony does take the time to sit down and do offer these tech talks where they'll just be like, hey, this is what we're trying to do. Look at this SSD. This thing will load a fucking shit out your ass before you can even realize it kind of thing. And that's exciting. And I'm glad that they take the time to do that, show what they're trying to do with their hardware. And it's just, it's, it's pretty exciting for me personally. So let us know what you guys think. What kind of consoles are you getting? Get an Xbox, get a PS5. Are you excited for the PS5? You think it looks like an exploded asshole? Hey, let us know. Uh, bootleg clam shell? I don't fucking know. It looks kind of goofy to me, but hey, that's what it is. But um, I don't think that's much else. Do you have anything else you want to add, Sean, before we go ahead and wrap it up? Not really, no. I mean, I think we covered it all pretty well. Yeah. It is cool. A lot happened this week. Uh, and yeah, we did. We talked about the Last of Us reviews and Sony being fucking weird. And then we talked about Sony being kind of cool uh, with their new stuff. But you're still kind of fucking weird, Sony. I'm just going to have you know that you're still kind of fucking weird. So stop that. Let people talk about what they want to talk about. You shouldn't have to... I still... I don't understand it. I just don't understand it. Like, like that's such a weird restriction. Can't talk about half the fucking game. It just seems like they're hiding shit, and I feel like that's what it is. They're just trying to save face. I don't know. I do not know. Put my tinfoil hat on, but uh, we appreciate everyone for hanging out. I guess we'll just go ahead and wrap this episode up. <clears throat> I think it was a pretty pretty meaty one. Had a good tech talk. Filled out. Read some porno. 
always a good good old porno sesh just some dudes being bros reading some porno together on a sunday night and i like that i like that that's me that's good stuff right there so good stuff please feel free to reach out to us connect with us what you thought about the show what do you think about this new tech what do you think about sunny what do you think about exos what do you think about the last of us let us know connect with us we want to hear from you guys but before we go sean as always what do you got for the people bro that is what they're here for <laughs> hugs and kisses and all your people hell yeah um but listen i don't have my facts how can i do this but uh oh my this site is ugly holy shit okay before we go boys we appreciate you all for tuning in with us i appreciate sean for hanging out with me tonight and uh tell your friends about us share our show we haven't really talked about this much but that's a really good way to get other people into it uh a lot of podcast stuff is either advertisement or word of mouth so if you have someone you think would like the show send it to them let us know that you send it to them and then maybe uh if they do tune in we'll we'll have a you have a referred friend that'd be cool and then we send you a dollar so, hey there you go there you go you get a dollar one of kyle's personal dollars my first dollar actually it's covered in shit and stuff so but um i don't even know what the fuck but we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up before we go guys as always i'm gonna leave you guys with a thought in 1681 the last dodo bird died rest in peace it's crazy, it's crazy.